Hello everyone and good um, morning, good afternoon, good evening wherever you're from. Um, it's just about 8 a.m. here on this uh, lovely Thursday morning in South Africa. It seems it's going to be a bit cooler than the past couple of days. I tell you, it felt like we were baking here. Eh? So um, anyway, good day to you all. Um, I just want to quickly take you on a circuit at Porto and um, the funny thing is the weather is completely against us, in other words, the winds, right? Um, but we don't care. Uh, we're going to force fly uh, runway 35 and we're going to use the LPV function so that you guys can get a grasp on the whole function. But in order for us to start, I'm going to start at the very beginning, right? So I'm going to quickly get into the flight planning of things and all that so before we do that i just need to make sure that i can put everything i need to show you on screen so that's the va right we're going to use the va to make our flight plan and get the ofb because it's integrated with some brief so whether you do it on some brief or from a va it's irrelevant as long as it's set up correctly Right, but for me, you guys should know by now, I always start with Navigraph. Okay, I always do my own flight planning. I don't rely on uh, Simbrief uh, to actually give me anything because I don't know the quality of those flight plans. They might work, they might not work. I don't know who made it. It could be a, a young child or an, <clears throat> an old man that actually doesn't know anything about aviation. They're just tinkering, you know, and I don't want to step into one of those flight plans. So I just make my own stuff. Right, so um, just quickly uh, for background information, I'm using my spare X plane this morning and I'm using Active Sky, the latest Active Sky. And uh, looks kind of nice. Anyway, just that's just a bit of background information. Let's get into this planning thing. Right, so. We're going to go LPPR, LPPR, and then what we're going to do is we're going to force, as you can see, we're going to have an 18 knot tailwind, which is really not on, but for the purpose of this flight, we have to do it. So I've got a choice. I can either switch off Active Sky or leave it. So I'm going to leave it to guess. Um, it's it's obviously wrong. So don't come at me and say, oh, you don't know how to fly. All those other nonsense stories. I'm telling you now it's for the purpose of the tutorial. All right. So we're going to take runway. Oh, that was exactly the wrong one. Take runway 35 and we're going to take the departure that's going to bring us this way. Right, to W. Right, W is for west as far as I know, so I should have known. Anyway, there we go. We're going to go back to 35 and we're going to use that one, April 6 Charlie. And we are then going to use uh, the RNAV approach for uh, 35. Right, so the one thing that you need to know with this approach, um, because I've done it so many thousands of times already, is energy management is key. All right, from the moment you start your descent, which is probably around about there, you're going to have to ride on your speed brake. Okay, if you let your speed get out of hand, you will not make 3000 mandatory at this waypoint and uh, you're going to be high and too fast for this approach. So um, let's quickly look at our chart. Okay, so you need to see there it says PR 542 so that one over there is mandatory 3000 crossing okay and that's part of your trick with this um, approach you need to make sure then for our purposes today we're going to use LPV so we need the EGNOS code to be put into uh, the MMR and we're going to set up everything just now so let's get into that not waste time um oh yeah i need to do the flight planning but hold on hold on hold on i'm 
getting ahead of myself. So, uh, in RVA, I'm going to go to free flight because this is not a flight that exists in the database. LPPR, LPPR. Okay. And to use the Zebo. Oh yeah, let's let's go back. Let's just go back one step, one step, one step, one step. Now we graph. Okay, so anyway, I forgot a couple of steps. I mean, it's just because I know them and I just forgot to tell you about it. Right, so now we've got this whole thing. What we're going to do is we're going to click on export. We're going to go copy to the clipboard. And I'm going to minimize this thing. We're going to go to edge. And I just went through a couple of steps. You guys did not see it again. So let me just start off in our VA. We can go to free flight. This is where we select our own flights that are not in the database. Select my aircraft. I always fly this one. And proceed to planning. Then we're going to select the Zebo. And we're going to paste our route in there. Alright, so I'm just going to select runway 35. Make sure somebody sees that. Um, set our contingency fuel and automatic step climbs must be enabled so we can't put that in so we usually get about between 11 and 14 thousand foot because uh, it's just a circuit yeah so uh, but i love the circuit because i can do every test that i possibly want to do in here right i think that's sufficient so we can generate the sim brief and there it's running So I'm just waiting for the downloads to happen. Right, there's the downloads happening in the background. So it's brought in my flight plan from SimBrief. I'm using the SimBrief downloader for that purpose. Which means that we can now go to load the OFP. Let's view it quickly. Make sure we've got the right one. Mm -mm. We don't because you know why? I'm in the wrong explain. I quickly go copy it. I'm so glad I actually checked this. Uh, copy. Replace. Load. There we go. That's the correct one. And now we can just activate it and let the air side services do its thing. Ground fly deck Call me through the menu when you're ready. Right, I'm not going to worry about the Avitab map for this one. Let's just keep everything as is. Right, so while we are at this page, let's get our Navigraph back on screen. Right, so remember that code we were talking about, 92435, please remember that one, um, or let me move this thing quickly, wait, 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 let's do this, then you can see it, right, we'll move it back just now, so what we want to do is we want to go to the GLS or LPV option, okay, now how it works is I obviously flew an LPV last, okay, it will auto detect the code range between GLS and LPV and it will automatically set your enunciator for you. Okay, so all we want to do is we want to have it on either LPV or GLS. We're going to put in the code, it will decide which one it is and then take it. Okay, so in this case we're going to go 9, 2, 4, 2, 3. And we're just going to flip it over. And the same on this side. 9, 2, Four, two, three. And we're going to flip it over. So that makes it now active. Okay. So because it's just a circuit and it's for training purposes, I'm going to go ahead and. Thank you. I'm going to quickly put in our course heading as well and start setting up the rest. So let's just put this thing kind of back where it was.
Right, so our course heading is 351. Alright. Let's go back to our OFB. Let's see. Okay, it's actually given us this is the first time ever. It's given us um, 16,000. I've only gone up to 14 here before, but it's okay. So um, we'll come back to the indicated airspeed once we've done the performance. Uh, inputs and stuff in the uh, FMC, so... Right, request the flight plan. I almost went and started typing it. I'm so used to doing it the old way slow. Some days I just got to concentrate a bit. Right, so 35, uh, many to west, able 6, Charlie, and we're going to go RNAV 35. It's very important when you fly an RNAV approach that you actually select RNAV. Eh? If you have the wrong selection here, yeah, the aircraft also going to get a little bit confused. Right, let's go step through the legs. Let's see what it tells us. So, airport's going to be enabled. Step through, there we go, nice clean circuit, no problem. There's no top of descents and top of climbs yet because we haven't done the performance uh, data yet. So let's get into that. Right, as a matter of interest, my f um, final reserves is, I'm going to make it 2.7, 2.7, so while well, that goes in, 16 is correct, execute, right, altitude constraint, right, that might be an issue that I need to look at, right, so let's go back, altitude constraint, Right, it's still giving us everything. There's a couple of altitude um, restraints here, 11,000 being one of them. That's why I usually use 11,000, because I know I'll be higher than that. Right, right, yeah, and this is the go around. All right. Okay, so answering the first question there um, on the forum is there is no runway in the legs list. That seems to be normal. Right, because that was one of the things I was um, thinking about. But anyway, we can see this is the go around procedure. That's our final approach fix. And as you can see there, it wants us higher, but there it wants us at 3000. Okay, so that's the final approach fix. There's no runway in between. Okay, so then what happens is because there's no runway, once we do the go around, we're going to have to um, cycle our um, flight directors, but we're not going to do a go around anyway. So it just doesn't matter if there's no runway. Um, I was thought we cycle flight directors afterwards. So. Right, I think you can also cycle the flight directors before you do the go around after the final approach fix. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Don't don't make that part of your training. Um, I'll just have to speak to Sasso or one of the other pilots just to refresh my memory there. But I seem to recall something like that. If you go and search for my Santos Dumont um, flight in Rio de Janeiro on my YouTube channel, you'll see I talk it through there. Um, I can also just go watch that, I think. You see, even I use my own tutorial sometimes just to refresh my memory, but that'll, that'll give a bit more clarity on this runway and fly direct the cycle thing. Because I know there's a special time that you have to do it, and I actually, the more I think about it, 
I actually think if you're not on automation, if you're flying by hand, you have to do it before the go around. Anyway, guys, I'm in the same position as you now. I'll go watch the video later. Please do that too. That will answer some questions. Good, okay, so that takes us to. Uh, let's just go back to the performance page. Uh, in one limit, so I'm not going to worry about that. But we're going to do flaps five. Let's just quickly see. It sounds like the loading is complete. Yeah. I've caught myself once or twice where I'm so fast that um, the side services is still loading. Then my CG is out and the trim is out, you know. So I, I've learned, you know, just wait until the loading is complete and then I get the proper um, information. So it's 5.5 and 146. Look, my guesstimate. Just one out. Yeah, it looks about in the middle. All right, so let's start our APU. Let's not waste time. Let's, let's get in there. I'm actually supposed to be at work already. It's just gone 8 a.m. here, but I've not flown that much, man, since uh, the last couple of weeks. It's it's just not been for me to fly, you know. I, I'm so tired. I work double shift at this moment. If you're wondering what happened to me, that's it. You know, it's overworked. Hopefully after this week it will calm down a little bit. I just need a breather too. I'm just human. But anyway, we'll get there. Right, so I'm going to switch my beacon on already. Oh my goodness, it's raining. You know what that means. Run to cockpit. So is driving up. Oops. Twice. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Now we just have to go and then reset our V speeds. Nice lightning. Wow. It was a storm on the west. It's obviously blown in now in the time I've been sitting here on the ground. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. with that wind dancing over there. Let's go closer. Look at that wind. Anyway, I told you the story about that already. Connected and bypassed steam circuit. Release parking brake. Alright, let's go. Starting pushback. You may start the engine. And I don't have Linda with me because it's a test flight, so to speak, with a little bit of a tutorial, so I'm not going to worry about things like that. Ooh, this guy is pushing weird. This is my my second copy of Explain. I mentioned it before, but um, yeah, I, I realize I need to go and update a couple of these plugins that's that is in here because some of them uh, are a bit old now, outdated. I like the fact that Beta Pushback has received so many updates now. So nice using it in Explain 12, but there, something went cockeye over there. 
we will go fix it later. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Brake Snow is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed and signal on the right. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. I'm just thinking out loud, while we are here we might as well um, just set up the hut. So I'm going to quickly go back find the runway information so we uh, 3480 can we put that zero. and press the button for our elevation and the elevation is 226 and then we can enter and if we look at our chart we've got a 3 degree glide slope alright so it means we can use it if we want to. We don't have to use it if we don't, know, don't want to, but it's on standby now. All right, so let's go. Brakes released. All right, let's get going. Check six pack, no problems found. Cabin is secure, flap set. Let's go. Taxi light can come on and brake check. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, so this is actually the first time that I see the new code in action that Zebo has put in with um, version 4.1.5 where the ND line, the magenta, is actually visible above the actual weather radar. Thank you, Zebo. I know about it because you told me about it, but I've never seen it until now, so that's cool. Really nice. What I'm going to do anyway is I'm just going to turn down the green a little bit. We don't need to see it that bright. We know it's there. That's good enough. Okay. So, landing lights, all the other lights. And Buddy Orge did the formalities. Awesome. Let's go on. Three, five. 
on runway three five Right, so again, before I take off, now remember we've got a massive tailwind, unless it's died down a little bit in the interim, but from planning we know it's going to be about 18 odd knots, that's there. Um, let's have a look, see quickly, currently it's at 14, 13, there you can see the winds, right? So um, we know about it, forget about it, let's fly. Um, it's not part of what we're doing today. We're literally testing LPV and showing you guys how it works. So I'm going to start my timer and I'm going to go for gold. Let's go. Doga. the sky. Right, so for the purposes of today's flight, I don't mind switching on the autopilot early. Right, gear is up. We're just going to wait for it a little while. Alnav and Nav can go on. Aircraft can do its thing. Rough up here, eh? Hey? Uncle John is looking for me. Oh, I'll answer now, Uncle John. Give me a second. How lovely. Look at this weather. So nice to just climb out above the clouds.
keep an eye out for icing, eh? We'll keep the seat belts on. We're not going to um, upset the poor passengers. They can hold on tight there at the back. I think they'll feel better. Look at this interesting weather. It's right there on the coast, eh? Very interesting. To infinity and beyond. Star Wars and all. You know. Right, so let's start setting down. So we want to be at 3,000 mandatory, remember. Right, to start setting up everything. Now uh, we can use break three. Then let's quickly see. Uh, forecast. Right, so for, for um, RNAV to work proper. Okay, especially on it. I mean, it works for everything. It needs to be the right to be with proper, but, 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 for on now specifically, if you have the wrong Q and H, right, you're either going to be high or low anyway, no matter what you do. Right, so you have to put the correct uh, Q and H in here for better performance. So it's just a given. You just have to do it. Um, you can skip it. I don't mind, but you'll you'll thank me later if you just do it correctly. So the current Q&H is still 1002. Um, I did not calculate the ISA diff. It's just something I'm going to skip for now. It will have a smallest impact. Uh, it's, it's not going to affect anything here. I don't think I hope. On the other hand, we might as well actually do it, I suppose. Why not? We've got the tools. Why don't we use it? Which is stupid. So let's go to airport elevation. Right, so the runway elevation was 226. That we can remember. Airport is 227. 227. And our current temperature is what? The current temperature is 11. Perfect. So that is minus 4. So then at least we've got a proper tutorial running right no jabbering no doing nonsense right then we want to drop at least 400 kilos there 63 point uh, and five and that should give us what we need Ugh, I didn't do the rest why not 63.5 I didn't do that, why, why? 
Anyway, there we go. So that's done. So it's slowing down for our descent now. We've got the lower valley, so it should start automatically. Let's set up everything else goes to 1002. Let's go back to the charts. Our decision altitude here on LPV is 480. Right, so that's one thing I also can show you quickly. Now we graph. You'll see if we come in LNAV, ENAV, it's 530. If we come in LNAV only, it's 540. See, so it becomes progressively less and LPV takes us down to 480. So we can then go and see. 480. Right, so you get a nice lower minima with LPV. Right, so there's the descent, and now the one thing that I said already is that we need to keep a keen eye on is the speed. We cannot let this aircraft run away from us. Um, once the speed and altitude goes out, it's a catch-up game, all right? And I know from experience it is going to happen, so we're going to have to be awake and just follow it closely. There's the icing there, eh? see? Let's just throw a little bit of wing anti-ice there for good measure as well. You see, ice on the wings. Look at that. Glad I checked it. There you go, gone. I think it's a nice idea that they show it to us and we can actually experience it as you can see here by the windows and all but I think that animation needs a bit of work eh? Right, so I'm going to switch the wing anti-ice off we do not want to fly with it on the whole time guys uh, we can switch it on a little bit later again but don't, don't fly with it on Right, there's the speed I was talking about and just as I obviously took my eye off the ball, it happened, right? See how quickly it can happen. As long as we're on that path, we're okay because we can bring the speed back now. But imagine we went into common VNAV and into that parallel descent, you know, it would have been catastrophic. So, better close my browser and concentrate. Guys, I'm talking to you like this because I know we're all human, eh? uh, so don't mind me rambling, but I know there's a couple of you that goes, oh, he does the same as me, or oh, yeah, I can relate it up into me, you know, so. And there we go. Now you see, now we're high on the profile, but we're slow, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that speed brake to just um, induce a little bit more drag there. Um, so have a look at the wing. Yeah, we need to put some wing anti-ice on again. All right, so by doing this, we're creating a little bit of um, a steeper descent for ourselves just to catch up on, on the profile. So my speed brake is pulled out completely. Gonna probably have to keep it out now for the duration of the flight because I tell you what, that 3,000 foot that you need to be there, where is that thing? That one, 
comes quickly, man. That profile is busy catching up again nicely. Zippo, I love the fact that we can see the magenta and the stuff above the green, man. That was a, a good decision if you do rewrite that card. I love it, love it. Here's our anticipation cues coming already. You can see we're fortunately below it. Um, you know, never mind the path, but we also want to stay true to the restrictions, you know, so get there. There's the path now. And stow the speed brake so we can go and get into trouble. Um, as a matter of interest, my ASXP is set up at 35% for um, the icing. And look how much we still get. So you guys must really go check your settings. Because eh? that those things are killers. If your settings is not correct and this thing puts the wing ice on too much, it's definitely going to kill you. And it's unrealistic. It really needs a bit of love from your side to go set these things correctly and there's the path again so let's pull our speed brake again and let's go down to given h1002 and then at least the path is better yay we need to slow down anyway so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull flaps one already Assist the aircraft a little bit with deceleration and um, doing what needs to happen. Right, I'm gonna stow the speed brake now. We're on path, on speed. Right, so I've selected flaps five now. Our anticipation cues perfectly on our um, final approach course, and we're waiting for the glide path to come. Right, just to check, we've got LPV set, so technically we can actually hit the approach button now. And there we go. We are on our final approach course already. Perfect. Right, this is it. Run reading. down flaps 15 a little bit premature but anyway wings are still clear I'm gonna keep the engine and the ice on there is flaps 30 and I'm just going to scroll down with my speed a little bit Right, and remember we've got a tailwind now, 14 knots at this point in time. We know about it, we told you about it before we started the tutorial. We needed this runway regardless of the weather. So please don't come at me with all kinds of clever answers or suggestions. Radio altimeter. Right, so even with this weather, even with the winds and everything, you can see the Zebo mod is very stable. Alright, oh. Temperature has risen a bit, I didn't check that, so 
There we go, we can switch off the engine and the ice as well now, so we don't have to worry about icing. Whoop, whoop. This aircraft is remarkably stable under the circumstances if you just set up Wind everything here. correctly. Uh, active sky, thank you. Question is, can I land this thing? Do I know what I'm doing? No? I I have this one customer. Every time I go and work at these premises, he, he comes and sits next to me and he asks me, do you know what you're doing? And I've been working for him for 20 years. It's fantastic. Interesting. Ah, no more rain. Well, a little bit, let's just keep it on intermittently. This wind is playing on us a little bit. All right, off the autopilot, off the uh, auto throttle. Let's go. Let's land. some reason I'm not slowing down so reverses are on, speed brake should be deployed, auto brake should be working, I'm just not slowing down so anyway I'll feed the toe brakes there. <laughs> that was interesting. Love to know why that was, I, I was just not slowing down. Strange. Well, I was slowing down, let me rephrase that, but not fast enough. I mean, really not fast enough. So anyway, guys, there you have it, um, LPV fully functional. Um, if your LPV does not work like this, we're going to have to analyze what you did or didn't do. But. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't want to mention names, so I'm just talking in general. Um, this is obviously aimed at a specific one, user, seven. but uh, there must be more than one, so you know, without mentioning names, guys, I'm just generalizing. So, again, yeah, if your LPV does not perform like this, then we need to seriously look at why. Why not? Because this is what it should do. Guys, I'm not even going to go and taxi back all the way. I need to go and prepare to go see a customer anyway. So that I just took a little bit of liberty this morning. As I said, I should be at work already. So I'm going to stop it right here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, go have fun. Enjoy playing with the LPV. Just make sure you follow the steps closely. You have to have the LPV coded in the MMR. And you have to have the RNAV coded in the FMC for your approach. Once those things are in place, it works like ILS. You just click your approach button when you're ready. The cues will work exactly like as if an ILS. The only difference there is it will enunciate and tell you it's a GLS LPV that it's flying right now. So 
that's a big difference. But the rest is just it's simulating iOS. So enjoy. Talk to you guys soon again. Bye-bye.